Welcome to Sweet Tea with D. And today I'm going to uh, get right into it. This is a follow up to a segment I did a couple of weeks ago uh, regarding Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, and their and it, it's gotten to a point now, you guys, where I'm going to say what I really wanted to say in that first video. This is giving me some, some real concern, especially everything that has transpired over the course of the last couple of weeks, which I will get into. But right now, this is giving me Nicole. This is giving me OJ. This is giving me Johnny, Johnny Cochran. Um... If the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. This is giving me all of that now as a result of Kanye's erratic, irrational behavior. But before we get into it, guys, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to this channel as well as my second channel, The Come Up Straight Up. At this point, I can honestly say that I am starting to get afraid for Kim Kardashian. I really am. It is very difficult dealing with someone who just doesn't give a F. And you can call it dramatic if you want to, but the events of this last week or so have really, really brought back some memories of the whole OJ Nicole thing. And um, I am of the generation, I am a person who was old enough to, who is old enough to remember when all of that went down. And this is giving me those vibes. I cannot shake this feeling, guys. So that's why I wanted to make this video. Kanye West is being the quintessential, controlling, manipulative, narcissistic ex- The erratic behavior, the ups, the down, the, the, the love, the hate, the, the, I go on every media channel I can and disparage you and say you're trying to destroy black men. And then next I delete all the messages and beg for you to come back to me. Any woman who has been in a domestic situation like this completely understands. When you are constantly being attacked, undermined, criticized, damn near stalked. I mean, he moved across the street from the woman under the guise that he wants to be there for his kids. When you feel powerless against someone's constant assault, and that's what it is at this point. He has done everything he can to hurt and undermine this woman. It's to the point now where people actually are seeing her as a victim. And the comments under his last post about wanting her back prove that.
the complete lack of accountability and self-awareness. The fact that this man has a whole girlfriend while asking for his family back. It is mind-blowing how oblivious he is to all of this. When a controlling man cannot control you anymore, watch out. Kim said in a recent interview with Vogue that for the longest time, all she did was make other people happy. And uh, two years ago, I decided I'm going to make myself happy. And that feels really good. She then said, and even if that created changes and caused my divorce, I think it's important to be honest with yourself about what really makes you happy. I've chosen myself. I think it's okay to choose you. At a certain point, she got tired. You get tired of always being the one turning the other cheek. But when a woman breaks away and get out of a bad, toxic situation, that's when a lot of domestic situations occur. You think it's a coincidence that he had to get Kim's phone number from someone else? This is the mother of your children. This is still your wife. Why, why don't you have her phone number, Kanye? Because I, rest assured, he has left crazy ass messages. And she probably just couldn't take it anymore. What other reason would there be? If they were in an amicable co-parenting situation, he had it before. And what about Julia Fox, Kanye's quote unquote girlfriend? This woman had the audacity to get on a podcast and say that she is sure that Kanye has residual feelings for Kim. Residual, meaning leftover feelings. She says it's human, it's normal, but he's with me now. That's all that matters. Oh, really? Oh, really? Women like her blow my mind. First of all, she herself is going through a divorce. She's running the streets and running the globe with Kanye while she literally has a one year old baby. Her baby just turned one. And she has a lot of turmoil and upheaval going on in her life with her alleged deadbeat baby daddy, ex-husband to be. Something she was quite vocal about just a couple of months ago, Christmas Eve. Kanye just posted on Instagram, God, please bring my family back together. Just days after he bought her and her friends Birkins and attended a, this lavish birthday party for her. What does that tell you, Julia? The heart wants what the heart wants. Y'all can kick it. You can do whatever you want to do behind closed doors. That's fine. But all Kim has to do is snap her fingers and he will come running back because that's who he wants. And you can continue to kid yourself. You can continue to soak up all the attention and give interviews all you want to but in the end julia you are going to lose and kudos to pete davison for laying up in the cut and minding his business and playing his position that's the difference between him and this julia fox chick pete knows his place it's tacky, it's trashy, it's inappropriate to be speaking on Kim and Kanye's marriage, their divorce, as, as Julia Fox is doing. And that speaks to her character, as far as I'm concerned, or lack thereof. Pete Davidson is completely unproblematic because Pete Davidson stays out of grown folks' business. And Ms. Julia Fox could learn a thing or two from him. All of Kanye's can't live with you, can't live without you, trying to get to you, to hurt you, and to get your attention by any means necessary, even if that means using North, their child, 
it, it's it's not only is it sad, you guys, this is really scary to me. And I just I just can't shake this feeling, guys, that something bad could potentially happen.